internauts, and welcome to Microcosmos. My name is Catherine, and I'll be your host for the week, where our topic is Whipple Shields, why we need them, and how they work. Micrometeoroids. They're tiny, fast, common, and extremely hard to track using conventional methods. And, as you may have seen, they have the potential to end missions, cripple our spacecraft, and even cause loss of life. Fortunately, no life has been lost as a result of these pebbles with a Napoleon complex. In addition to natural micrometeoroids, there are also man-made micrometeoroids. These come from accidental collisions between crafts in space, spacecraft malfunctions, and stage separations, and have been deliberately created while testing anti-satellite missiles. USA, China, and Soviet Russia were looking at you. Now, with the high potential of catastrophic damage, any plans for long-term space travel would require the creation of shielding to defend against impacts. Behold, the Whipple Shield. Invented by Frederick Lawrence Whipple and referred to as meteor bumpers by the spaceflight community, the shields come in many varieties, with the International Space Station utilizing approximately 200 different kinds of the shielding. So how do they work? In the most basic terms, a Whipple Shield employs a primary layer which, upon being impacted, impacted by an object breaks the projectile into small pieces. Following the primary layer, there's a standoff, an empty space between the first and second layers of the shield, to allow for a buffer area for debris to spread. The debris scatters and strikes the rear wall, ideally having slowed enough not to cause the failure of the rear wall. There are many varieties of Whipple shields. The type of shielding required is determined by its placement on the craft. Two common variations are the stuffed and multi-shock shields. In a stuffed Whipple shield, the standoff layer is wrapped by Nextel, a ceramic oxide fiber, and Kevlar. Providing further shock and scattering debris, the location on the ISS of stuffed Whipples, providing further shock to the scattering debris. Locations on the ISS subject to the most impacts are surrounded by stuffed Whipple. The multiple shock shields consist of several evenly spaced layers of Nextel throughout the standoff and are used to protect pressurized modules as they are the most catastrophic in the case of damage. Failure of physical shielding is a constant danger in the harsh environments of space. And as discussed in previous episodes, there are many ways to go about breaking things. The Whipple Shield is no exception. The initial bumper may fail to slow debris to the point where it's traveling fast enough to perforate the rear wall, allowing material to freely enter the craft. Softer impacts can cause the surface of the shielding to pedal out and away from the body, compromising the structural integrity of the rest of the adjacent shielding. Unfortunately, even if the craft avoids perforation, loss of air pressure, and structural damage, the most insidious risk is still present. Spall, which is a small flaking or chipping of metal, can occur during regular impacts from the internal wall in a module. Aluminum spall particles are particularly flammable. This must be noted because the internal walls of the ISS are mostly aluminum composite. We're not quite sure what lies in the future development of the Whipple Shield, but we do know that we have them to thank for the continued safety of humans and our robot companions in space. Thank you for listening to this episode of Microcosmos. If you'd like what you heard and would like to hear more, please subscribe and then click this little bell to be notified of our future episodes. If you want to hear in-depth opinions on space flight, please feel free to check out our podcast, Cosmicast, which lives on allforscience.com, as well as your favorite podcast service. Thank you.